Lagos State Government announces traffic diversion ahead city marathon. President Bola Tinobu signs electricity bill into law. And on the foreign scene, authorities confirm deaths of five people over mask demolition in North Indian town. Any sports? Confederation of African Football reveals about 2 billion people what is 2023 Africa Cup of Nations. Now the news in details. I am Timmy Dio. Anthony. The Lagos State Government has issued a traffic advisory ahead tomorrow's Lagos City Marathon between 5 a.m. and 2 p.m. Following roads will be temporarily unavailable to motorists during the marathon. Funcha Williams Avenue from Stadium Surulere. You come on the road to Anthony. We're going to to Third Milan Bridge. Inbound and outbound Third Milan Bridge. Dolphin Road to Alfred Wani Road. Falam around the bounds to Bodilon Road. Lucky Bridge to Freedom Way. Akianda Shalat to Amando Bello Way. Meanwhile, motorists can make use of Akpagwan Bridge, Inwadi Co Bridge through Kastin Roundabout, Ikwari and Bade Thomas. Eco Bridge through Kastin Roundabout and a Papa Road to Link Oyibu, Jebba to assess Abut Macaulay. Also, motorists can go through Victoria Island to Link Independence Bridge and CMS Bridge to assess Akpagwa inwards in Gerald Lopa and Ido and Oyibu to connect about Makali Road to continue their journeys. A statement issued by the Commissioner for Transportation, Uluwa Shiongwa CME, said all outbound journey from the Kuru to Road, Funcha Williams Avenue and Ruth Lagos Island are exempted from the diversion. A CME noted that Third Milan Bridge would not be available to motorists from 12 a.m. tonight till the end of the marathon. The Lagos State Government has intensified its fire prevention sensitization campaigns across the Lagos with visits to three major plank markets in the state. Addressing the traders on the need for campaign, Commissioner for Special Duties and Intergovernmental Relations, Uluwak Ben Gawiyemidi, said government is concerned about the space of fire outbreaks in the markets across the state. Oyemide said though the government has invested heavily in providing firefighting and emergency intervention equipment. The heat loss is usually incurred during the fire outbreak, particularly in markets, are too monumental to be ignored. The belief that it's then become necessary to draw the attention of traders in the market to government concern about frequent fire disasters that could be easily prevented through education and advocacy. The Director of State Fire and Rescue Service, Margaret Adeshaye, appealed to traders to take more caution to prevent fire outbreaks in markets particularly during this Amazon period. Adeshi advised traders to take precautionary measures, such as putting off all electrical appliances while closing for the day and not storing inflammable items in their shops under any circumstances. She said the fire services have been overhauled with emergency calls for interventions and advised that the damage caused by the outbreak in the last couple of months in Lagos cannot be quantified. Also adding his voice to the campaign, the Director General of Lagos State Safety Commission, Larry Omodula, said the campaign is necessary as governments would not want to take the enforcement route until enough sensitization has been carried out. Markets visited include the Okobaba Plank Market in Ibuti Meta, the Amo Plank Market in Mushi, and Okiafa Plank Market in Ichigo. Lagos State Neighborhood Safety Agency, LNSA, and Lagos State Residents Registration Agency, LASRA, are set to collaborate towards Safer Lagos Initiative with the Think Plus agenda of Governor Badge Desomolu's administration. Speaking at the recent meeting between both agencies' management team held at Safety Arena, Baladi Ushudi, the general manager of LNSA, Ifalade Oyeka, said the agency had deployed its grassroots and technological capacity in the fight against crime and criminality across the state. Or you can say the safety agency is currently configuring a situation room to carry out peripheral forensic comparison, especially the face recognition technology, hoping that the collaboration with LASRA will help in the area of data sharing, especially in the creation of database for the use of the agency. On a part, the general manager of Nasra, Balikis Adebi Abiola, expressed the lights to be part of the journey to deepen the security apparatus of Lagos State, 
acknowledging that LNSA is a game changer in enhancing the security of lives and properties of residents. State Water Regulatory Commission, Laswako, has warned water producers, particularly those operating in Oshudi, Sula local government area, against the activities of fraud starts, impersonating the commission's office to scam them. Executive Secretary of Laswako, Funke Adekwaju, said the commission has been inundated with information that a group of persons, numbering about seven men and women, have been extorted money from some water producers around Osuli, Oshodi, Solo, local government area of the state. Adipani stated that the group does not represent any agency of government, saying that they are imposters and impersonators. She advised the associations and group of packaged water service producers to be conscious of the situation, imploring them to immediately report the activities of the unscrupulous element to the nearest police station or to Laswako office at Block 19, that floor, Sectorate, alongside Kedja, or they can call 081 6878 And now to the rest of the story. <music> President Bola Tinubu has signed the electricity bill into law. Tinubu's special advisor on media and publicity, Andrew Gilali, said the bill seeks to address the plot development and environmental concerns of host communities and set aside 5% of the actual annual operating expenditure of power generating companies from the preceding year for the development of host communities. Yelali noted that the phones allocated for the development of host communities will be received, managed and administered for infrastructure and development to the host communities by a reputable trustee manager to be jointly appointed by the Jenkos and host community. Still on the federal government, the federal government is planning the construction of renewable power plants to boost electricity generation across the nation. Minister for Power at Debayo at Dilabu said this during a meeting with foreign agencies. Adelabu highlighted the creation of renewable power plants that will be one of his eight strategies to ensure incremental improvements in national power supply. He also promised to ensure that the Bura Electrification Agency lives up to his expectations by serving the underserved and the unserved rural communities that may not be community com commercially attractive to the distribution companies. The National Union of Pensioners, NUP, has lamented the impact of economic downtown on its members. NUP President Godwin Alumobisi, who said that this during the press briefing in Abuja, said retirees in some states receive as low as 450, 500 and 1,000 naira as monthly pension. Abu Bunsi explained that the difference in pension rates across the country was due to lack of pension harmonization, which the union has consistently advocated for. He stressed that the situation is very, very uncalled for by the failure of many states to implement the reviewed minimum wage. And now to foreign news. At least five people have been killed and dozens of others injured during the protests sparked by the demolition of a mosque and a religious school in India, the latest in a space of demolitions targeting Muslim structures. Municipal authorities in Adwani town, in the northern part of Uttarakhand, bulldoze the building, saying it has been built without permission. Police said Muslim torch vehicles and threw stones at them in the protest that followed, prompting them to fire live ammunition and tear gas in response. The district magistrates of Nanital District, Vandana Singh, where Hadwani is located, said demolition and its aftermath were not communal and should not be seen as such. She said the process was linked to a government drive to demolish the property that is neither registered as a religious site nor has been given any recognition. <music> and now to sport. The Confederation of African Football, CAF, has announced that about 2 billion people are watching the 2023 Africa Cup of Nations in Cote d'Ivoire. CAF President Patrice Musepe said he's at a meeting with CAF member associations presidents ahead of AFCON final on Sunday. He noted that it is an achievement that Africans should be proud of, 
saying the next one would even be better. He also added that during his interaction with the media, Nigeria's president, Bola Tinubu, would be in attendance when the Super Eagles take on host Côte d'Ivoire in the final of 2023 Africa Cup of Nations. Just before we go, slow down at road junctions, intersections and pedestrian crossing. You can follow us and like all of our social media platform. X, formerly Twitter, Lagos Traffic 961. Instagram, Lagos Traffic Radio 961. Which is live on Facebook, Lagos Traffic Radio 961 FM. And on YouTube, please subscribe and watch all our previous programs and news on our channel, Traffic Radio 961. Did you know that the Samoa Administration trained 280 unemployed youth for global certification on solar farm construction and technology for the supply of electricity in Nigeria? You can get more details on Lagos State Government website. To end the news, here are the highlights of the major stories. The Lagos State Government has issued a traffic advisory ahead of tomorrow's Lagos City Marathon between 5 a.m. and 2 p.m. President Bola Tinubu has signed the electricity bill into law. We also told you that at least five people have been killed and dozens of others injured during a protest sparked by the demolition of a mosque and a religious school in India, the latest in the space of demolition targeting Muslim structures. And in sports, Confederation of African Football, CAF, has announced that about two billion people are watching the 2023 Africa Cup of Nations in Côte d'Ivoire. For contact with the newsroom, please send a message to Lagos Traffic Radio at lagosstate.gov.mg. That ends the news broadcast, compiled by Sadiq Yusuf. I am Tammy Dio Anthony. Many thanks for listening.